Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. Herrera with Escalia Health and today we're going to be talking about hypothyroidism such as Hashimoto's disease and how that contributes or can worsen non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to understand about hypothyroid is what does that word mean? Now hypothyroid refers to your thyroid gland which is an important endocrine gland found in your throat area and it refers to the thyroid producing either very low levels or no levels of T3 and T4 which are the thyroid hormones that are often talked about. Now why is this significant? Well the whole purpose and function of T3 and T4 is to ramp up or boost your metabolism, right? It's to, to boost the metabolic activity throughout all of your cells or most of your cells in your body. And the way that the, these two hormones do that is that once your thyroid secretes these hormones into your bloodstream and they travel to all the different cells, what ends up happening is that it triggers the activation of the production of new proteins within those cells because your cells have the ability to produce new proteins for things like enzymes, structural proteins, uh, transport proteins, etc. Now, when you get this increased production of proteins throughout your entire body, it increases the amount of activity that's occurring, right? And so when you get an increase in activity, you also get an increase in energy expenditure, right? You need more fuel to sustain that activity, hence why you get a boost in your metabolism when your thyroid hormone secretes T3 and T4. Now, with people with hypothyroidism, their T3 and T4 levels are either really low or non-existent, which can result in as much as a 30 to 50% decrease in metabolic activity or a decrease in your overall metabolism, right? And your ability to utilize energy and facilitate these metabolic processes. Now, why is this a problem? Why is hypothyroidism and low levels of T3 and T4 a problem? And more importantly, how does that contribute to or how, is, how does that relate to developing or worsening a fatty liver? So let's talk about some of the specific issues that are caused by low levels of T3 and T4 that can contribute or worsen a fatty liver. The first thing that you want to understand is that your cell's ability to absorb glucose from the bloodstream goes down, right? Your cells have a harder time pulling glucose from the bloodstream or blood sugar from the bloodstream. This is important because when this happens, your pancreas then has to secrete more insulin, right? And raise your insulin levels in order to force your cells to start to pull that glucose into the blood, which then can lead to issues like hyperinsulinemia, which is two high levels of insulin floating around in your blood, which then can then contribute to insulin resistance, which is one of the major factors when someone develops a fatty liver and puts them at risk. The next issue that you want to be aware of is that with this condition, you also get an increase in the amount of fat and cholesterol in your blood which is a really big problem because when you have a lot of fat in your blood, eventually that fat travels to the liver where it's then deposited and stored and therefore worsens a fatty liver. Now, interestingly enough, this occurs because the amount of bile that is produced and secreted in your liver goes down when you have low levels of T3 and T4. And bile is one of the ways that your liver can actually pull cholesterol from your bloodstream and then secrete it out into your large intestine and then you expel it through your feces. And that mechanism, right, that, that pathway to get get rid of excess cholesterol, it gets gets dampened and inhibited when you have hypothyroid, when you have a hypothyroid condition. Also, the rate of utilization of food for energy goes down, which means that your again, your body's ability to use the food that you eat to for energy for your cells goes down, which then increases the amount of fat storage in your body because all those calories, since they're not being used for energy, they're then stored in fat, which means that you're gonna get, you're gonna gain weight, right? Your, your fat cells are gonna grow and cause more issues like dyslipidemia, right? When you have increased levels of cholesterol in your blood, right? So it contributes into that as well, kind of participates in this little vicious cycle. And that, of course, all that fat will eventually travel into your liver at some point. The other thing that happens is that your, uh, your liver's ability to perform something called gluconeo Neogenesis also gets dampened and decreases, which is really important because this is a process that your liver utilizes to produce long-term energy, right, throughout the day or when you're asleep to keep you alive, right? So your ability to have long-term sustained energy will go down, which is what, which is part of the reason why a lot of people with hypothyroidism uh, develop things like fatigue or exhaustion, chronic exhaustion throughout the day. 
Another thing you have to understand about this is that this is worsened by the increased amounts of insulin because of the lack of absorption for, of glucose into the cell. So again, another vicious cycle starts to develop here because of the increased amounts of insulin. The next thing is glycogenolysis also gets impacted and reduced. Glycogenolysis refers basically to your body's ability to produce short-term energy, right? For example, uh, glycogen, which is what this refers to, is stored in things like your muscle cells, your liver cells, and is what your body prefers to utilize when you go running or when you start to lift weights or when you start to perform exercise. So your ability to produce that extra energy uh, for exercise, for short-term energy usage, will also go down, which again will make it harder for you to have to develop the motivation or energy to actually work out, for example. Your body's ability to burn fat will also be inhibited, which is a problem, again, because of the lack of T3 and also because of the rise of insulin levels, which will then contribute to weight gain and again, dyslipidemia, right? The excess amount of fat in your blood cells, which contribute to inflammation and to, of course, a worsening of a fatty liver. And finally, your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, will actually decrease. The amount of calories that you burn just to stay alive, right, will actually decrease. And this is because you have a decrease in enzyme activity, a decrease in metabolic activity, right? Because again, the T3 and T4 hormones are responsible to ramp up your metabolism. But since that is not occurring, you're gonna get a reduction in the amount of activity and therefore the reduction in your amount of total calories that you burn just to stay alive. The other thing that happens is that your mitochondria will either shrink or they'll lessen in size or lessen in numbers because again, there is a lack of metabolic activity occurring and mitochondria is one of, one of those special organ or one of those special aspects of your biology that actually can produce its own proteins, right? Because it has its own DNA. So that will go down, and which means that your total amount of energy that you can produce throughout your body, because again, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's the main way that your cell produces energy that comes from the mitochondria, that'll go down. And so therefore things like exhaustion and fatigue will also be worsened. So now that we talked about all the ways that a hypothyroid can actually negatively affect a fatty liver, let's talk about some of the solutions, right? Let's talk about some of the things that we can do to actually improve it. So the first thing you have to understand is that if you've been diagnosed with things like Hashimoto's or any other hypothyroid condition and you've been given medication for it, make sure you do take that medication, right? This isn't meant to substitute proper medical treatment. It's just meant to more augment what you're already doing. So in order to help deal with all of these issues, we're gonna focus on three things, the nutrition or the food that you eat, exercise and what, how exercise can impact and improve this, and as well as fasting, because these three components are aspects in your lifestyle that you can change and you can have a direct impact on that can give you really positive results. So let's talk about food. Now you definitely want to limit, if not completely eliminate, large amounts of saturated fat, low, car low fiber carbohydrates like rice, pasta, etc., sugar, and fructose. So you want to, in my opinion, completely eliminate these from your diet because all of these nutrients will worsen literally all of this, like every single point here will be negatively impacted by eating large amounts of any of these low quality uh, nutrients. Foods that you should be eating include fish, for example. Fish is a really important source of a nutrient of a mineral called iodine. Um, now, I do recommend that you source the fish they eat from good quality sources like wild caught salmon as opposed to farm raised salmon because the nutrient content will be very different and it's way better for you if you if you eat uh, more wild caught salmon, for example, or wild caught fish in general. Now, fish is really important, again, because it has a, a, a nutrient, a mineral called iodine. Now, iodine is an essential, is a really important ingredient that your thyroid needs in order to help produce and make more T3 and T4, which is really important when you have hypothyroidism because you're probably not producing any or very little small amounts of T3. So we want to make sure that your thyroid has as much of the resources it needs to produce as much T3 as you possibly can. And one of, the, one of the ways you can do that is by consuming more iodine, especially from food sources. You can also consume it through supplements, but it's preferable if you eat it through whole foods. Now you wanna also consider eating more of specific spices like fenugreek, curcumin, coriander, and cumin. And the reason is, is because these specific spices have been shown through studies to actually help your liver produce more bile. It'll stimulate the production of bile, which is really important because if you remember here, in the issue where you have large amounts of cholesterol and fat in your blood, one of the ways that your liver can get rid of that and reduce the amount of cholesterol in your bloodstream is by secreting it through bile. But how, but 
with hypothyroidism, because of the lack of T3, your level of bile secretion and production actually decreases. So when you consume things like fenugreek, especially fenugreek, because that's a very potent one, curcumin, coriander, etc., you'll actually help promote the production of more bile in your liver and thus help support the release and the excretion of that excess cholesterol and the excess fat in your blood. So let's talk about some micronutrients. Zinc and selenium are really important because they are used, again, by your thyroid to help synthesize T3 and T4. So other important ingredients that a lot of people are actually deficient in. So make sure that you have adequate amounts adequate amounts of selenium and zinc. Also L-tyrosine is an amino acid that is really important because the way that your thyroid produces T3 and T4 is that it takes iodine and then it takes uh, another protein called thyroglobulin together and mixes them together to produce T3 and T4 and thyroglobulin is synthesized or, or created through or with L-tyrosine. So make sure that you are ingesting uh, adequate amounts of L-tyrosine. This is naturally found in dairy products and protein products, for example, milk, dairy, eggs, etc. And if you're vegetarian or vegan, make sure that you supplement the L-tyrosine or make sure you're eating foods that contain them. So now let's talk about exercise. What is the best exercise to fit this puzzle? So the first one is aerobic exercise. This is a really important form. It involves things like running, sprinting, walking, uh, anything that raises your heart rate is considered aerobic exercise. The other one is resistance exercise. So things like uh, that involves you pushing and pulling against some kind of weight or resistance. So like things like dumbbells, uh, kettlebells, body weight exercises like push-ups, squats, etc. Those are all forms of resistance exercise. Aerobic workouts are really important because they promote the production of more mitochondria right? So things like runners, sprinters, they, they tend to develop way more or way higher amounts of mitochondria in the body and make them more efficient, which is important because one of the issues that we face here, especially when we're, when we're trying to boost our metabolism, so to speak, is to increase the amount of mitochondria and increase their activity in the body, which will help increase and offset this issue that we face here when we have a hypothyroid. The other thing, the other form of exercise, which is resistance exercise is really important because it promotes glucose absorption, right? Which again, that's the first issue that we had here. Now glucose absorption is really important with resistance exercise because you're manually forcing your muscle cells to pull glucose and sugar out of your blood and into its cells, which will then help with things like insulin resistance and, become, and help you become more insulin sensitive so that you can reverse that really big factor when it comes to uh, the development of fatty liver. The other thing that'll happen is that your total BMR will actually increase, right? Because you're utilizing more calories, you're promoting the, the creation of more mitochondria, your muscles are getting bigger, your, your body's getting stronger, and then therefore you're just gonna need more energy to sustain all that, which will increase the amount of calories that you'll burn. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is fasting. Fasting is an excellent strategy if you have some form of hypothyroidism, and you also suffer from a fatty liver. And there are many reasons for this. One, fasting promotes lower levels of insulin. So right off the bat, you have a huge advantage there. Uh, the other thing that happens is that fasting promotes the production of a hormone called glucagon, which is the opposite of insulin. And glucagon is important because it tells your body to start to break down fat for fuel, or start to utilize its own fat deposits for fuel, which is important because when, uh, when you have hyperthyroidism, your ability to burn fat goes down. And so by practicing intermittent fasting, right, you'll actually promote and kind of reinvigorate your body's ability to burn fat. The other thing that happens is that you get the promotion of growth hormone, right, which is really important for protein synthesis, right? If you remember, part of the issue here when you have low amounts of T3 and T4 is that your body doesn't get the signal, the cells of your body doesn't get the signal to produce more proteins, to synthesize more proteins, right, in other words. When you fast and you get that release of growth hormone, that'll help offset that a bit 